Howdy, and welcome back to the Antarium. Today is a DIY video. We'll be creating a large outward setup for our fast-growing Neopanera Velosa colony. If you recall, we have several colonies of these ants and they are quickly outgrowing their current spaces. It has become near impossible to do maintenance without risking stings and escapees. Unfortunately, a fluon barrier will not work here because these small outworlds retain too much humidity, causing the barriers to quickly fail. So, here is our solution, a giant 15-gallon acrylic terrarium. I found these at reptileenclosure.com and had them sent to me with a 3 4 inch hole drilled into the side for a connecting tube. This is some high quality acrylic with a lot of space for our ants. They come with metal mesh vents that allow a lot of airflow without obstructing the top view. The mesh vents have large spacing, but thankfully our Neopanera ants are even larger. I would not recommend this for a small species of ant. This wide space with airflow will hopefully allow us to produce an environment where a fluon barrier will be successful. These ants will inevitably continue to increase in number, and I like to be able to do proper maintenance with ease for a while. These terrariums also come with these nice hasp blocks for the lids to ensure they remain securely shut. This is a great insurance policy should things not go the way we want them to. To get this started, I found a really cool piece of driftwood at a Petco of all places. Never seen something so useful for our purposes in their sort of woods or for sale before. So I snatched it up. It is hollow underneath and will provide a naturalistic looking nest entrance once we finish the rest of the setup. A 3 4 inch tube is hot glued into the back of it to secure the connection. This piece of driftwood has several gaps and crevices allowing for multiple nest entrances. Next, we add coarse play sand. You can find this at your local Home Depot store and they come in 50 pound bags for a couple dollars. Be sure to wash it to clean it and remove the finer sand grains. Now that it is filled up with sand, we have created a naturalistic nest entrance that resembles a fallen log or a tree limb that is embedded in the ground. You can see why I was so quick to snatch up that piece of wood. It worked out exactly the way I envisioned it. I may never find a more perfect piece of natural wood like that again. Next, we will add some ghost wood. This wood is commonly used in terrariums and found in pet stores or online with various suppliers. Having them layered like this creates a lot of elevated spaces for the ants to explore. Also more importantly, it provides areas for us to place dishes for honey or other carbohydrate sources away from the nest and ground level. Ants have a tendency to cover their nearby carbohydrate sources with dirt or even their own trash. Some may argue it preserves the carbohydrate source, while others will point out that the ants are simply covering up a sticky obstacle. No one has definitively answered why they do this. And now for the big reason why this setup is so dry and arid, the Fluon Barrier. Here we are using the Biformica brand. It is important that you make a Fluon Barrier at least two times the length of the ants you are trying to keep inside. This minimizes the chances of them miraculously reaching over it. Here we made the barrier three times the distance for good measure. We use a painter's tape so it makes a nice clean line after applying the Fluon. It looks much better than haphazardly applied bears I often see among outworlds. If it works, it works, but I also enjoy aesthetics as well. When applying Fluon, it is important that you ensure it dries smoothly. Here we use a clean cotton ball. You can use circular motions as well as vertical or horizontal sweeps. Give the Fluon a good 5-10 to 10 minutes to dry. 
then peel away the painter's tape to reveal a crisp and appealing line. You almost forget it is even there sometimes when it is done this cleanly. Well, here we are. It is complete. This outward sports a lot of climbing surfaces, a large water dish, an elevated honey dish, and some rock decor with that naturalistic driftwood entrance. It looks clean and has an almost completely unobstructed view. These neopen air ants will have a lot of space to explore and forage in that can be easily cleaned or restocked with water, honey, and prey items without them escaping. With the outworld completed, it's time to connect our large and stinging friends to their new space. The current nest space will suffice, so we are going to simply be switching the outworlds out. I am finding that these ants are ridiculously easy to keep healthy and reproducing. You just have to keep up with their growth. The diet I provide these ants consists of live prey. This includes crickets, doobie roaches, mealworms, and superworms. For carbohydrates, I provide them with raw honey in a dish along with their open water dish. Occasionally, I may provide fruit flies. The downside to fruit flies is they will leave fecal smears on the sides of the outworld as they walk around. They build up over time and it renders a floor and barrier useless since it isn't a perfectly smooth surface anymore. That is a lot of cocoons with new adult ants on the way. These worker ants are monomorphic and at full size they are virtually the same size as the queens. It can be hard to pick her out sometimes, not that a lot of her workers are at their full potential. The nest is now connected and their exploration begins. Let's take some time now to observe their first interactions with this arid new world and see how the fluon barrier performs. They will start out shy and timid, but over time they should become bolder. Now we will use the macro lens to follow them around a bit. The focus distance is short so you really have to stay close to keep the subject in focus. This one about gave me a heart attack sneaking up on me like that.
The first test of our Fluon Bearer. Will it hold up, or will these ants laugh at our efforts? Can't really say she tried to cross it. Let's watch another attempt. And perfect. This is good news so far. They are trying, but as you can see, they can't grip anything. This is going well. Let's hope it stays functional for a very long time. Looks like she went face first in prison with honey, but decided she wasn't really ready for that yet. Now you may be wondering how this setup can work for a tropical ant. They prefer a high humidity in their environment. Well, this can be adequately achieved by keeping the nest at a moderate to high humidity. While the outboard is dry and arid for the Fluon barrier, the colony gets all the moisture it needs from the water towers in the nest and the open water dish. As the population grows, I will make larger gypsum nests to accommodate them. Hopefully this larger outboard will be adequate for a long time to suit their foraging behavior. I will be repeating the same outward building process for all the other Neopanera colonies as they outgrow their current setups. My shelves are going to be packed. We will post a part 2 video to this DIY to show you macro lens footage of these ants settled into their new setup. If you enjoyed this content, please give us a like, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe for more ant keeping content. We'd love to read our comments, so if you have any questions or suggestions, we encourage you to let us know. We'll see you in the next video.